on this episode of Slancha. Dartmouth, Nova Scotia is home to a brilliant new business with a delicious bite. Lake City Cider was founded by a local entrepreneur whose European instilled love of cider led her to take on a business of her own. Join me next as I find out why Lake City Cider rhymes with great taste. Today I've returned to the City of Lakes. Dartmouth, Nova Scotia is home to exceptional, friendly, down-to-earth folk and Poet Camo, a local entrepreneur and the owner of Lake City Cider. It takes a great deal of courage to strike out on one's own, and right away I could tell that if Poet Cider was anything like her, it was going to be a huge success. Tell me about Lake City Cider. How um, did it start? It started a long time ago. Um, it's kind of been something that's been growing, I guess, in different parts of me kind of coming together. Um, I kind of do feel like it's a bit of me. You know, I always call it my third child, um, just because it's a lot of work, but it also means a lot to me. Um, I traveled to the UK when I was in my 20s. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Um, and I'd gone and done one year of university. And I was just like, you know, I wasn't really in it. So I wanted to travel, so I traveled, went to the UK. In the UK, they have cider everywhere. I can never really drink beer. So when I went there and I could go to the pub and have a nice cider compared to a wine or something else, it was a really good option. And so I spent about a year there, drank a lot of cider, came back and kind of realized that there wasn't really any cider around. Um, and so that kind of put a little seed, I guess, in my brain. Um, my, my father grew up in Annapolis Valley, so of course I was aware of all the apples that were kind of readily available and I'd always kind of heard these kind of folklores because really I didn't know if it was true or not about how many apples were really there and that the fact that most of them were planted to export cider apples back to the UK. You know, again, just like, why are you exporting these apples? I did work another year for another company, but during that year I really focused my extra time on a business plan really looking at financials, looking at the possibility of actually having a cidery, talking to suppliers, getting real prices. It does feel like a true expression of myself. Um, I grew up in Dartmouth, and if anyone's been to Dartmouth lately, it's definitely changed, especially downtown. There's a lot more vibrancy going on. And so it came this time of, you know, maybe a bad thing happening or a stressful thing, but it, the reality of it was if I didn't do it, and someone else did it, I would be pretty pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the, the shortest version of that story, I think, that I can... So it was um, really um, kind of this build over a number of years. Yeah, That yeah. brought you to, um, well, today. Yeah. But when did you open your doors? So we opened a year ago, just over a year ago, so July 12th, um, which seems like ages ago, but also seems like just yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you've got a beautiful space here. Thank you. Yeah. Now, did you know when you when you set up to open that you would have a space here in Dartmouth, or was it kind of up in the air? No, actually, down to our business plan was Dartmouth. Do you um, do you remember the moment when you kind of fell in love with cider? Was there a specific moment for you? It continues to happen. <laughs> um, you know, like as a as a small year as well. Like we're taught to taste. Um, and so when I, I taste, usually taste anything, and it, that even I think spreads to food is you don't just consume and the, it's not just about do I like it or not. Most people drink or eat something and the first thing they decide is do they like it or not. And that's it. They don't think about any of the other components. And so I always try to stop, pause, take that moment and really think about like why do I like it? You know, why are these things here? Um, 
And there's always, yeah, there's a few producers out there who are making some incredible ciders. And when I get to travel, and usually they're not exported, um, but when I go and travel and get to try them, it's kind of, it reminds me of why I strive to make better and better cider. Yeah. It's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about the types of cider that you make here. Okay, so one thing, and this goes back to, is not necessarily a reflection of, of the cider scene right now in Nova Scotia, but there was a time when cider was coming, we'll say, of age in, in Nova Scotia. I don't think we're actually there yet either. I think it's just starting. Um, but the ciders that started to kind of, we'll say, flood our shelves, not really flood, but trickle in, um, were really mass-produced ciders um, from away, mostly Europe, um, and they tended to be blended a little sweeter. Um, I like things a little drier. I like flavor and balance. Um, and so I, I actually created one of our products, which is our Dark Side Dry, really selfishly for myself. Um, I wanted a dry cider that kind of was balanced like a dry white wine, but had obviously apple as, as the backbone. Um, and so when I was, when we first, you know, I was first opening, trying to get open, um, I assumed that my semi-sweet would be what would propel and probably champion. But soon enough, I realized that our dark side dry was actually overselling our other one. So uh, it's funny how I made something kind of for myself um, it kind of became where we go with most of our ciders. So we tend to lean on the dry side of cider. So, um, Poet, you are the owner. You are the head cider maker. Mm -hmm. um, what motivates you? What keeps you going? Where does that passion come from? Um, I think it's a lot of things. Um, you know, you, sometimes you make these small batch ciders and it's your favorite and it's better than all the other ones that you make and you go, okay, it's gonna keep getting better. And you strive for that, you strive for a better batch and you strive for a more interesting batch. Um, part of it is, I think the family piece where I have two young kids and it's, it's something that was really unexpected, but to see, I don't know the way they look at me and my business and my shop, it's pretty awesome. How do they look at you? <laughs> You really make me emotional. <laughs> Sorry. Um, it's just, yeah, like I have a daughter and it's, it's important. Yeah, to see another strong female. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's, a, that's huge and that was really unexpected. Um, and you know, just being out there and, um, you know, of course I have my shirts and I, this is basically my uniform for life right now. Uh, <laughs> Next up on Slancha, I speak to some of the staff to find out more about the magic of this particular business. And Poet surprises me with the size and scope of her operation as she takes me for a behind the scenes glance of Lake City Cider. Well, we just heard it was a good spot to come for some cider, so for some friends. We would have brought our dog too if we'd known that it was dog friendly. It was really cool. Um, I'm not, actually not from Halifax. I'm from Newfoundland and PEI. Uh, my friends here wanted to come here, so I figured I'd join. Um, I like one, two, and four a lot. I don't really drink a lot of ciders, but these are really tasty. Yep, the District 5 is what I'm drinking right now. It's my favorite. Lake City Cider opened its doors only a short time ago, but already owner and head cider maker Poet had found her vision had taken root with local patrons. To find out more about what makes this little cidery so unique, I spoke with one of their bartenders, Tessa. So Tessa, tell me a little bit about your role here at Lake City Cider. So currently my role is more of a bartender type of server um, for our clientele coming in. Uh, we speak with the clients and everyone coming in about the food better cider is, what's different about it, why we're unique. So um, tell me what makes your guys' uh, cider so unique? So what I love about Lake City Cider is it's really different. So a lot of times people come in bridgely saying they don't like cider, um, which kind of gets me excited because we are so different. We really do, um, we're really kind of set apart from others that you might find in other traditional like liquor stores. Um, so we really strive for like quality cider. It's awesome that we have our cidery in the back. People get really excited that we actually do it all ourselves. We even bottle, can ourselves, everything like that. So we really have a hand in 
all the different steps and aspects of the business, especially with Poet, um, which is kind of exciting. And we can actually speak to it a bit more, which people always really appreciate as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How would you describe the, the atmosphere here for customers? What's the experience like? So I would like to hope that all of our customers are very excited to come in and they're happy when they leave. Um, so when they come in, uh, if someone's brand new with us, we'll give them a whole rundown about what we're about. Nice. Yeah. And do you get a lot of um, locals here mainly or do you get a lot of tourists as well? Um, we get a lot of both actually. Um, so we have our regulars that we'll see all the time. We know them on a first name basis quite well. And we kind of know what their ciders are, what they like and what they'll be excited about and give them a little bit of um, information about what's coming up next. Um, and then tourists that come in, we love that as well. So they're always really excited to try our cider. Um, a lot of people too lately have been really interested in cider because it's becoming really popular, more so in the liquor stores. And you see a lot more craft cideries around as well. How do you like uh, having a cidery in your well neighborhood, really? It's exciting, yeah. Um, I'll be honest, before I started, I always enjoyed a cider, but it wasn't something that I would, it wasn't the first thing I'd pick off the shelf if I went to the liquor store. Um, but again, I think I had that kind of same idea a lot of people have of just like very sweet, kind of almost like basic cider, like very just like apple juice, basically yeah. hard apple juice, if that makes sense. So. Um, yeah, so like coming here and like working here, it just like definitely opened my eyes up a lot to like different types of quality. After speaking with Tessa, I had the opportunity to join Poet on the production floor to find out exactly how the process in her cidery unfolded. So Poet, this is amazing. I had no idea that you guys had all this space and like production just mm -hmm. back of your store. Yeah, most people don't assume when they see the front. Yeah. Um, which is, you know, a relatively medium sized storefront. Um, that it actually continues back yeah. into this. Um, this is where the magic happens. Um, so this is, yeah, this is kind of our secret little gem. And most people, when we offer like a small tour, because obviously we're not that big, mm. um, are pretty surprised when we open the door to the back and they go, okay, yeah, yeah. this is serious. These yeah, you are make, actual tanks. And you make everything on site here? You make everything on site. So the only thing we don't do uh, at, at our location is we don't press. So mm -hmm. we work really closely with Sterling for most of our apples, not all of them, but most of them. Um, they're amazing. Uh, they've been in the Valley for years and years yeah. and years. Um, they're kind of a little staple there. Um, so when I, need, when I need juice, I basically call my guy, Yeah. call a pal. And I say, how it's all verbal. There's no like emails or texting. Uh, I love it though. It's like really old school. And so um, I tell them how much. Um, usually it's anywhere from a thousand liters to six thousand liters at a wow. time. Um, and we have thousand liter totes that we transport to them and they come back full. And then when they're empty, we clean them, send them back up, and it kind of rotates that way. Um, so we call him, we find out when he presses next, make sure he has the nice clean totes. Um, and then he fills them. Um, so he takes whole apples every time, presses, fills them, so there's no freezing involved, um, which kind of just, the apples store better whole anyway, and they keep more of their kind of natural acidities and sugars longer. Um, we get the juice back within 24 hours, usually the same day that it's pressed. Uh, we pump it into one of our dimpled tanks, which are fermenters. This so dialogue over here? Mm -hmm. So core skin stock stem. Okay. Um, one of our, our tanks. Uh, these, are, these hold 6,000 liters at a time. So now, are these the names of the tanks? Yeah, they're just fun names. We just, it's, well, when, when I'm talking to my staff, and there's not many of us, there's actually only one other person who works back here with me. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when Joe and I are talking, um, you know, you don't want to confuse tanks. So it's, a lot of people just put numbers on their tanks, you know, T01. Yeah, T yeah. And I thought, well, let's, like, I kind of challenged my staff. I'm like, let's come up with something a little bit more, you know, fun. Yeah. Um, that's one thing about owning my own business. I get to create my environment. So if you think about your fresh juice, so our juice comes in, it doesn't look like apple juice. We're not talking about like Allen's apple juice, nice and clear. Uh, We're talking about farmer's market, right? So that nice brown, uh, yeah, yeah. cloudy stuff. And actually, if you let that sit in your fridge, you probably could see some sediment yeah. come out of it. That's what we're talking about. And most of those are non-pasteurized, non no preservatives. Um, some might put some in, depending if that's their goal is just to sell it as, um, si um, you know, uh, market cider. Fresh cider, yeah. Uh, yeah. 
we want ours with nothing in it. We just want the apples um, so that nothing inhibits what we want to do in the fermentation process or changes the flavor. So we will rack. So we start at the top when we rack. Usually the cleanest juice mm -hmm. is at the top. So you want to rack from the top. You slowly get down. You get down to this guy. Oh. And then eventually when you get down to this guy, you open the manhole. Oh. And yes, this is called the manhole because yes, you can fit in it. Because when you want to really clean these things, you get inside them. That's pretty tiny. <laughs> you can fit, it's amazing. It looks small, but, um, oh my God. But so uh, we get inside them, um, you know, we open it up. I'm just happy and to see that they're all closed <laughs> they're all and they're closed. all, so no one's gonna be like, Holly, get yeah. in there. <laughs> I was thinking about it, but, um, but no, we're pretty full right now for tanks. So all the tanks you. are, yeah, you're safe. Um, but yeah, so then we open the manhole and okay. we actually rack a little bit more off. Mm -hmm. The tanks are c slightly coned, not like beer tanks. Beer tanks have the massive yeah. conical. Um, our tanks are more like winemaking tanks. We do get sediment, but we don't get the mass amount of sediment that you get with beer. Yeah, okay. Just because beer, you have grain, you have all these other things, things happening, yeah. lots more solids. Um, so we get a little bit of solids, but it's nowhere near what, what beer gets. Next up on Slancha. I finally get to sit down with Poet and try the cider that everyone's been talking about at Lake City Cider in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. I drink a few different ciders, but it's cool that you have a place to come and try a bunch of different varieties. Yeah, definitely. It's a cool spot. I like your duck logo, too. I tell them that they can bring their dog. That's definitely a plus. Uh, there's many different ciders you can try, and there's cool pop-ups. Right now they have salt here, so that's interesting. It's got a, a cute little spot. I mean, it's nice to have the window open here, and uh, it's also cool to have that brewery over there, and you guys have really cool merch as well. So. I love it. Great cidery, for sure. Lake City Cider in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia had been making a big splash as one of the newest cideries in Nova Scotia. Inspired by Poet's love of European cider with a desire to use local apples, I was excited to finally sit down and experience the product for myself. Okay, so we have six different ciders here. Six. This is very exciting. So the first one um, is going to be the Dark Side Dry. Mm. And this is, like I said, selfishly, I made this one for myself. This is your favorite? 